Hey everybody, it's Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Bow Reel Fitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying, and I'm here to bring you another quick tie. And this quick tie is sponsored by Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Remember, every order over $99 from them gets you free shipping. Okay, I'm going to be tying tonight out of our Season 5 kits. Ooh, that, this, uh, there we go. Season 5 kits, we're going to be tying out of Episode 2. We are tying Rancy's Gypsy King, all right? great fly this is you're gonna really want to keep this one in your box there's a lot of variations you could do to this one but this specifically this pattern super good so open up your kit if you're tying out of this but if you're not it's okay just head over to our website you're gonna get a full material list you can go to rocky mountain fly shop or your local fly shop grab the materials that you need or maybe you already have them you can just follow along and get some of these tied up let's head on over to the vise all right this you can see it in the vise right here this is what we're going to be working on for the next couple minutes Okay, hopefully in some way or fashion, it's gonna look similar to that at the end. So let's go ahead, let's get our hook in our vise. So what we're tying on tonight is a number 10, or sorry, a size 10, number 1280 Daiichi hook. Okay, so go ahead, get that secured in your vise, make sure it's not going anywhere. Okay, um, for thread tonight, I'm gonna be tying with some, you could either use 6-aught, or here I'm using um, <clears throat> some UTC 140, something a little thicker, because we're gonna be working with some foam, we don't wanna cut through the foam too easily, okay? Let's go ahead and let's start our thread somewhere just behind the eye. We'll go ahead and we'll trim out the tag end of that thread. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work this back down into the hook bend, all the way down, laying a nice little thread base in. Okay, we'll come back just slightly. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and tie in some brass colored size small wire. Okay, it's gonna be the first thing we do. This is gonna be uh, securing our body which is some peacock curl. So let's just tie that in. We're gonna bring that thread back right to that hook bend, edge of the hook bend. And you can leave that wire just off the back. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get right at building this body, okay? Now, in your kit, you've got an abundance of peacock curl, okay? That's what we're using. There's a reason there's abundance there. You need a really good size clump, probably 10, 12 pieces. Um, we're building a nice thick body on this fly. We're kind of roping up um, we're roping up this peacock curl to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, what I have here is probably about 10 pieces, okay? But it's important that they're all matched up at the tips. So this one, for instance, currently is not, but I'm gonna come in here and it's gonna trim this out, okay? Gonna level them all off. Those tips are quite bitter anyways. Sorry, I'm <laughs> bitter. They are quite fragile, okay? So I'm gonna lay this right on top. I'm gonna take a securing wrap. It's gonna Spin my thread so it hops backwards. Okay, I'm gonna pull that back and I'm gonna secure those butts down. Okay. Might create a little bit of a bump at the back of the fly here, but it's not gonna be noticeable once we put all this body material down. Okay, so I've got that secured in right to the bend. I'm gonna work my thread back forward. Okay, I'm gonna leave it right behind the eye. This is where we're gonna bring um, all this material forward to. I did a little half hitch there just so I could set my thread out of the way. Now I'm gonna get both hands here working with uh, this peacock curl. What I want you to do is place the butts in your finger and spin them, okay? So we're gonna rope up this peacock curl. It gives it a nice appearance when you get it on onto your fly. And then we're just gonna start palmering this forward, okay? You can use the rotary function in your vise or you can just manually do it, it's fine. If you get to a point where you're like me here where it hasn't totally spun together, I'm just gonna spin it up again. Make sure it's spun nice. Gives it a nice velvety appearance, very buggy, okay? I'm gonna bring it right up to the eye, okay? And I'm gonna come in and bring my thread back to a working position. Hold that peacock curl straight up. Get a securing wrap in behind it and in front of it. Repeat that process one more time, behind it and in front of it. And then we can go ahead and trim out that peacock curl. This stuff is notorious for slipping and going back, so it's really important that you secure that quite well. Now I'm just gonna go ahead with my wire and I'm gonna go in that same direction, palmering forward. I'm gonna do some nice segmenting wraps, trying to keep them nice and evenly spaced, okay? I'm also gonna take this all the way up to just behind the eye, secure it down. Just like that, and I'll go ahead and trim out that wire. Make sure you grab your buddy's scissors. These might be Dana's or not. If you're looking for some good buddy scissors, I think if you head on over to Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, you might just have to look for something called Dana Scissors, and they might have some just like this for you. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thread, and I'm going to hop it back 
while I'm on top of the fly. So this is not that it really matters. I could wrap through this a bunch of times. You're not really going to see it. But I'm just going to try to keep my wraps up on top of the peacock curl. I'm going to come back right about there. I'm segmenting that overall hook into quarters. So I figure I'm about a quarter of the way back from the eye. That's going to take a couple thread wraps. I'm going to leave my thread there. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get some foam involved here. So we got some foam for this fly. This is just two mil brown foam. You want to measure it so that it's about a hook gap in width. Okay, so this one's a little over right there. So I'll take and trim it back a little bit thinner. So you want to try to match that hook gap and width. And then for a length, there we go, see that's a little closer, much better. So as a length, I want to have this hanging basically just off the back a little ways and then out to the front here a little ways off the front. So I just gauge it roughly and not doing anything specific right now. But at the back end of the fly, I'm going to cut just a little point into it. So I'm going to flip it over, cut again. That's what I want the back of the foam to look like. Okay. Now I'm going to lay this on top of the hook. And I want that pointy end there, you see, to extend just beyond the bend. Okay. So a little bit beyond the bend of the hook. Now I'm going to take one wrap here. This one's a loose one. Okay. Put a little tension on it. Next one, a little tighter. Third one, completely tight. Okay. If we do it in that sequence, we shouldn't cut the foam with our thread. Lift that foam up, make, take a couple wraps in front of it. That's going to help it from spinning around the hook shank itself. Get that nice and secure. Okay, and we're just going to kind of leave it as is. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and grab some crystal flash. You're also going to notice you have quite a bit of that. So if I grab, let's say, four or five strands, they're long strands, like so. So I'm just going to take them, I'm going to fold them over, and I'm going to cut right where they're folded. So this is going to give me probably double that up. So if I had four strands, now i got eight. I'm neat. That's going to be plenty for this. So it's going to still be quite long. I like them long in this fly because I'm going to be able to keep them out of the way. If you cut them short right away, they actually just really want to get in the way. So I'm going to tie them in like that, fold that over, put a few thread wraps down to secure them. And I'm just going to pull them back out of the way like so. If you have a material clip or something, um, it's great to just hold that stuff back. Now I'm going to go to my rubber leg. So a little different than normal, we're going to tie two in on each side okay, at the same time. So I've got these still attached to each other. I'm just going to leave them like that. They're too long for, for this specifically right now, but we'll trim them in a second. I'm just going to take a couple uh, thread wraps kind of loosely, let the weight of the bobbin hang down, and I can still go in there and I can adjust these. I can move them around to where I want them. I'm try to get all this flash back out of the way again. Just trying to get those legs kind of situated. You, you, if you can accomplish it, you'd like that front leg to be pointed down slightly like so. Once I got that there, as you can tell, the flash is just being lots of fun for me. So if you really need to, you can go ahead and just clamp it out of the way, which I'm going to do here. Okay. Now I'm going to stick in the rubber legs on the near side of the fly to myself. Same exact thing as I did on the far side. Take a couple wraps just to get them kind of laying in there. And then I can go ahead and I can adjust them a bit. Okay. Just kind of put them right in the middle so you have a, a good adjustment on both sides. Make sure those are just up against the edge of that foam, just like so. Okay, next material we're going to go to. Keep up with me here, guys. I know there's a lot of materials, but this isn't too bad if we take it at a good pace. We got some deer hair. You also could use elk hair. We're going to take a decent-sized clump, maybe half a pencil width, nothing too crazy. Um, this isn't a very big fly. So we're going to grab a little clump of it. I'm going to trim it off right off the patch that it's on. And now right away, I can see there's going to be a lot of fluff in the back of it. So you can see all that fluff in there. I'm going to try to get some of that out. You can kind of flick it out. You can use a, a small comb if you like. Now I'm going to go ahead and place this right in a hair stacker. Okay. Go ahead and stack that hair. So get it in your hair stacker. Get it in there. So we're going tips down as always here. Give that a couple whacks on the table. Now when I pull this off, I want the butt end of the uh, stacker to be facing back down the fly because that's where I want the tips to be. So as you can see here, I pull it out. I got the tips right there. Go ahead and grab those tips, keeping them together. I can do another little clean out while I'm at this point. Should be able to get all that fluff out of there. And my tips should be nice and lined up, okay? So now when I'm measuring here, I want my tips to extend just beyond the back of that foam as well. So I don't want them way out here. Don't want them too short. I want to be right about there. So once I've measured that, I'm going to switch hands keeping my position in the, in the hair right there. And I'm actually going to cut this right here. Make a mess of my table for you. 
So when I tie this in, I don't want to have to trim again. I want to tie this in just like so. So I'm going to tip those hair down. I'm going to take a gathering wrap on that hair. Second wrap a little tighter. And you're going to see it flares that hair slightly. Then I'm going to put some wraps through the butts of the hair. Okay, now if that moved your legs around at all, you can always just readjust them. It should still move for you. Okay, so I'm left with something that looks just like this. Okay, now you can see at this point, my crystal flash is going to be held down by that hair. So I can come in here and trim that crystal flash. I'm going to trim it again just beyond that foam. Make sure that foam's sitting up nice and tall. Right on top of the fly. Take a couple more securing wraps. There we go. So I got that hair and that wing to flare real nice. I got my legs in place. No problem there. Pretty much done this fly. One more material to add in here. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab <clears throat> my grizzly hackle. Okay, so you need a hackle. Um, you can either use from a cape or you can use a, um, a full length saddle hackle is probably preferred. It's a little bit easier to work with because they're longer, a longer stem on them. I'm just going to go ahead and grab one onto my kit here. And we're going to tie this so that the underside of the saddle hackle here, as you can see in grizzly color, is pointed back down the fly. So underside is going to be back down the fly. I'm going to pull just a few of these at the back out, trying to attain the size that I want because I want it to be just beyond the actual size of the hook gap. And once I've got that there, to kind of prepare the stem, I'll trim it down slightly. Then I'll just take a trim a few of those fibers up. That just gives me something to tie in with. And so hopefully it won't slip around on me. So I'm going to come in here, tie down that stem. This is going to be something you want to make sure is good and secure. So take some good thread wraps, lock it in place. Make sure it's not going anywhere like so. Okay. Now I'm going to want to do probably at least four wraps of this hackle, depending on the water you're fishing it in, whether it's, you know, a little bit rougher water or calmer water, you could maybe um, change the number of wraps, but I want to go with at least four. So trying to keep one wrap in front of the other, just trying to get this buggy appearance to kind of happen right here. Wanna make sure you keep that foam up on top. We'll go like there. And then I want to secure this. So I'm going to bring my thread in, run it along a hackle, go to the other side. Now go back in front of it, just like we kind of did with the wire or anything else. You want to take some thread wraps in front, some thread wraps behind. Okay. Now when I'm done, it should look like that. Okay. So I can go ahead and I can trim out that piece of hackle. Okay. Now I'm going to quickly jump my thread right forward to the eye. Okay. Kind of hold that material back a bit. Now I'm going to lay that foam down. We're going to create the head here, the head of the fly here. Okay, so I laid the foam down. Now I'm going to take my thread and go right over top of that foam. Try not to track any, or sorry, trap any of that hackle that we just put in. And take a nice tight wrap down on top of that foam. Take a couple more. So when you look at it from the front, it gives you a little bit of a bulge for the head. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and just trim out this foam to get the rest of it out of the way right away here. I'm just going to extend my scissors just slightly forward a couple mils and there you go that's the head of the fly okay pretty simple way to finish off that head now this can be a bit of a bear to whip finish because you got to hold everything back out of the way so i'm going to grab my half hitch tool so again as i've showed before it's going to do a couple wraps and i stick the half hitch over the eye of the hook and pull the thread down that's going to give me a nice secure knot same thing pull it down one more time i can go ahead and trim out my thread and set that aside. We just have a little bit of trimming to go on these legs and we're pretty much set. Make sure that that foam is right up on top of the, the hook itself. Looking super buggy. Okay, so while these legs are still together, I'm gonna pull them out. I'm just, this, is a, this is a feel thing here, guys. I want the front legs to be a little shorter than the back legs. I'm gonna trim those there. I'm gonna hold these back legs to just be on the back of the foam and trim them there. Now, originally this fly was actually a crane fly is what it was meant to be and now we've kind of adapted a little bit more into fishing it for stone flies um, really effective in both regards but important to kind of just gauge those legs where you want them and then i'm just going to go with the last piece here is i'm just going to split all those legs so if they haven't already come apart on you just split them right to the fly the body of the fly you can go in there with just a little bit of resin we want to secure 
those last few thread wraps that we took on the underside. Dab those there. I'm using some Bone Dry by Solar Res. I'm going to cure that with my UV light. Okay, now I'm going to flip this around. You're going to get one last good look at it. Okay, that is Rance's Gypsy King. Really good pattern. Definitely suggest keeping this one in your box and fishing it some more. All right, guys. Well, that has been another quick tie with Tim. It is Tim here with Fly Fishing Board River Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. This has been a quick tie brought to you by Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. And until next week when we get at some more patterns, I guess we'll have to wait till then. See you then.